Next, a second story about a legendary figure who's coping with a major health problem and for now has decided to stay on in her job. Hari Srinivasan begins with some background. She is the winningest coach in college basketball history. Pat Summit has spent 37 seasons leading the Lady Vols at the University of Tennessee, won more than 1,070 games, including eight national championships. But Summit told the Washington Post this week she'd begun to feel off her game last season. I can remember, you know, you know, Ben trying to, to coach and, and trying to figure out schemes and whatever and I just it just wasn't coming to me like I typically would say oh hey we're going to do this going to run that I think it probably caused me to you know second guess her son Tyler Summit says he noticed changes as well there's just a, something different and whether it was asking the same question twice you know what time do, do I need to go to the office things like that um losing her keys three times instead of just once. Uh, you know, things like that. Someone's just a little, a little off. After a May visit to the Mayo Clinic, doctors diagnosed Pat Summit with early onset dementia, Alzheimer's. The news stunned the basketball world, especially Summit's players, but they vowed to rally around their coach. I was trying to hold back tears just because I, I love Coach Summit and I, I love, you know, just being a part of this program. I feel honored to be under her and, you know, be a player. Seeing that for her it was just um, really sad, but, you know, like I said, I come away um, ready to go after and ready to fight along with her. Known for her fierce determination, Summit said she plans to continue as head coach, albeit with increased support from her staff. I could retire, but, you know, right now, you know, we're, we're trying to get this team where it needs to be, and, you know, you know we've got a veteran group, and, you know, I'm looking forward to the season. I'm not going to let this keep me from coaching, that's for sure. It is a decision that has garnered support from the Tennessee athletic community. Pat Summon is an icon for women's basketball. I feel like one of my jobs is to protect a Pat Summit, who's a friend and a colleague to all of us, to protect the legacy of Pat Summit, which is absolutely incredible, and to keep our program moving forward. And the program's success continues. Last season, even as she was struggling with her undiagnosed condition, she led the Lady Vols to a 34-3 and season. For more on her story, we turn to Tyler Summit, Pat Summit's son, and Sally Jenkins. She's the Washington Post reporter who sat down with Coach Summit. She's worked on Summit's autobiography with her and is a personal friend as well. Thanks for being with us. Tyler, let me start with you. First of all, I'm sorry your mom's going through this, but uh, how did she take it initially when she got the test results? You know, there was an initial state of denial, I'd say, and the question, why me? Um, it's not hard to be diagnosed with this. But I think after a month or so, she came to terms with it and accepted it. Sally Jenkins, as a friend, you said you started to notice some things. Uh, you wrote very eloquently. You said that there's a faint sense of dimming, as if a jar has been placed over a candle. How so? Well, you know, Pat would ask three times, you know, what time, what time should I be at practice? What time is the meeting? Uh, Pat loves practice. Practice is the center of her day. And so it, she calls it her classroom, you know, when she goes into practice and works with her players. And so when she couldn't remember um, literally what time she had to be at practice, th that was a pretty profound sign that something was wrong. Uh, you know, Tyler has said she would ask, where are my car keys three times in a day instead of once? <laughs> She's always juggled too many obligations and she's always juggled so many responsibilities that you know we've always uh, seen her lose her cell phone or lose her car keys but but this was just beyond normal. Tyler you said that once she accepted her diagnosis uh, and she was out of denial it was like a gun went off and she bolted out of it. What, explain that. Well it took her a while to come to terms with it but once she did she started cracking jokes about it. You know oh, I, I forgot I have dementia things like that or maybe I would forget to take the dogs out and she'd say, oh, I'm, I might be rubbing off on you, huh? And she just, you know, had a good time with it and really became comfortable with it, comfortable saying it, things like that. And, and what is she doing now? What kind of therapy is she participating in? Or is she, is she doing mental exercises? She is. She has a routine and my mom always has a plan no matter what it is. And she wakes up, she has her iPad and goes with her puzzles things like that to keep her mind sharp and then also she exercises every day, um, builds her neurons in her brain and she always has a plan to, to fight this. Sally, is this, the, is this the type of person she is in every other part of her life and how she approaches it? 
Absolutely. I mean, I, I think that Pat is fighting this fight the way she's fought every fight that she's ever had, and she's had a lot of them, uh, by the way. Uh, and it's also, I mean, personally, I really feel it's an extension of everything she's ever taught on the basketball court. I mean, if Pat has ever had a purpose as a teacher, it's to teach her players and teach young women and this guy here um, how to deal with a reversal or a, or a setback. I mean, she's worked her whole life uh, for this moment and, and to be in this sort of fight and to show people how you fight. Tyler, kind of picking up on that, what is it, uh, for folks who might not know your mom, what is it that uh, makes her want to keep coaching through this? It's her passion, and it always has been her passion. She wakes up every day and thinks about the relationships that she has with those um, young ladies, her players, and she just loves being around them and making their lives better, not only on the court, but also off. And so there's nothing that could take that passion away from her, and she's not going to let this diagnosis stop her from doing that. Sally, we've heard the numbers, uh, but beyond those successes on the court, for folks who don't follow college basketball, what is it about Pat Summit that holds her in such high regard across uh, so many different sports? Well, her masterpiece is sitting right next to me. Um, I think that if you ever questioned Pat's values or what she teaches or what she tries to do with uh, other people's children, um, all you have to do is watch her son in the last few days, and you know she's absolutely authentic. Uh, in all of her values. Uh, I think people know Pat a lot better now after the last few days, and that's one thing that's very gratifying to me as her friend. I've always wished everybody could know the Pat that I know, and I feel like people actually will get to do that now. I think they're seeing uh, her courage, her humor, her warmth, and frankly, uh, you know, the very best of her in this guy here. And, and Sally, what's been the reaction uh, across the college basketball world or the athletic world? Are, are, are people writing in? Uh, yeah, there's many, many, many reactions. Coaches, her friends in the profession are terribly upset. Uh, you know, her former players obviously are, are terribly upset. But, you know, everyone I've talked to, I've said, you know, the best antidote for this is to talk to Pat directly. Every time I start to feel bad about this, I look at her or I talk to her and I feel a lot better. I have a lot of faith in the way she's fighting. I have a lot of faith in her inner strength, in the way she's dealing with this. Um, I think that Tyler and I feel really pretty good about her because we've gotten to be around her in the last week to 10 days and, and watched her gearing up to go public. And so I think we probably feel better than a lot of people who haven't been able to talk to her and see her. Tyler, uh, has your mom thought about the fact that in some way she's carrying a larger community on her shoulders now? She's almost becoming an ambassador for this condition and Alzheimer's too? You know, my mom's very modest and she never looks past the Lady Vols. I think um, even though she may realize that other people are watching, she just focuses on what she does every day and again stays modest and just does what she's always done, be really open and honest about things and have her program be an open book. And Sally, uh, kind of a last question about basketball here. What is that support infrastructure that she has set up uh, when the Lady Vols take the court this year? Um, what kind of role is she playing? How has she sort of formally mm -hmm. moved things around? Yeah. Well, she'll delegate some things. You know, I think Pat's having some difficulty tracking all 10 players, time, possession, both benches. Uh, the shifting schemes of a 40-minute game. And she's having trouble tracking all of that information together. So I think she'll delegate some of the, the play calling responsibility, but she's still the greatest rebounding coach in the world. She's still the greatest defensive coach in the world. She's still the greatest motivator in the world, and she's still one of the greatest leaders I've ever met and, and will ever meet. And so they're going to emphasize Pat's strengths and what she has always done well. And the things that she's having a little trouble dealing with, they'll just delegate to her assistant coaches. She's got 89 years combined experience on the bench behind her. Uh, her associate head coach, Holly Warlick, has worked with her for 28 years. Uh, her assistant, Mickey DeMoss, has worked with her for 20 years. The youngest member of the staff has been here seven years and participated in two national championships. So she's got a real brain trust on the bench around her. And as her friend, I, I feel you know, I just parachute in periodically from out of town. You know, I can go home with a lot of peace knowing that she's got that kind of armor and love around her. All right, Sally Jenkins from the Washington Post, thanks for your work and your articles. And Tyler, uh, best of luck to you and your mom. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank, Thank you. you.